Coming up today, as we close out Design Week, we'll be joined by the former world number one who created the course that is hosting his QBE shootout this week. I like it a lot. Greg Norman, justice at last. Yes, the shark is on the show to share his thoughts on design philosophy, his clothing line, the action in Naples, and his take on Tiger's recent return. Plus, Alistair McKenzie and Bobby Jones teamed up to create what has become one of the most well-known golf courses on the planet. But where and how did their partnership begin? Matt Janella will take you on a journey to the World Golf Hall of Fame to reveal all. And Charlie Reimer will explain what makes their creation such a masterpiece. And did you miss the Harmons in studio this week? Well, we've got you covered. Stay tuned for the best of Butcher's visit, including his take on Fowler's major aspirations, DJ's master's odds, and whether Tiger will ever win again. I learned a long time ago never to say never when Tiger was. All that and more right now on Morning Drive this Sunday, December 10th, 2017. And a very good morning to you, Cara Banks, alongside Gary Williams, Charlie Reimer. We've got Lauren Thompson and Matt Janella joining us today as well. But what a weather delay they're experiencing in South Africa right now. Not mm. having the best of luck for the final round in the Joburg Open. We will get you back out to coverage as and when play does resume. But Charlie Sharma is in the clubhouse sitting on a four-shot lead right now. How difficult is a break in play like this? It doesn't seem like enough, a four-shot lead. Uh, weather delays are always uh, sort of a, a momentum changer. If you've got the momentum, the last thing you want to do is go to the clubhouse. If you're going the other direction, the first thing you want to do is go to the clubhouse. So he's in a bit of a tough situation, but uh, you know, all of us that have played the game professionally have learned to deal with these delays the best we can. I, I always talk about just disengaging, grabbing a book, sure. uh, just trying to get completely checked out away from golf. You can't do anything about it, so why worry about it? Yeah, it's really out of your control. You just got to sit and be patient. Patience is the key in these scenarios. It is, and most of these players have been through. When you're trying to win, uh, it, it feels like every minute is probably an hour. And oh, by the way, weather here. We all walked in here this morning, looked like we were going to cover an alpine downhill. Oh. It's 41 <laughs> degrees. This four ply cashmere, for real today. Mm. Well, when you can put the UGG boots on in Florida, it makes me feel the like what I'm boots? at home. UGG. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I, I know what those Sheep are. Sheepskin, they're Ugly very boots. warm, nice yes. and cozy. Let's say good morning now, though, because we've got a big show ahead of us to LT, Lauren Thompson. Man, I definitely had a Floridian moment today. I come walking in with a big old sweater, and then I had the flip-flops on. I got so much heat from it from some people that I had to find some tennis shoes and kind of switch things over moving further into today. It is cold out there, though, from a Floridian. I can say that. So, also, i got to let you in on something else. The Big Easy, just part of a big honor. It was announced back in August, but last night officially in New York at PlayStation Theater, Ernie Els received the 2017 Heisman Humanitarian Award. This honor it was given to the World Golf Hall of Famer. He's a four-time major champ for his ongoing efforts for his foundation, Els, for autism. And Cara, he is just the 12th recipient of this title. Very well-deserved. Yeah, it was really cool to see golf kind of leak into football. Ernie Els, don't forget, uh, was awarded with the Payne Stewart Award in 2015. He was that recipient. Now he's, uh, of course, been honored by Heisman as well. If you know him at all, Charlie, it's mm. really no surprise. Well, uh, Ernie, and his wife Liesl, what they've done to, to help families with uh, autism that are dealing with autism is absolutely unbelievable. I have so much respect for what they've done in this area, Gary. If you have seen their Center for Excellence, it is world class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're lucky to have people like them who are just trying to help out other families dealing with what they have been um, as well. All right, let's get to what else is happening. And final round play at the Joburg Open was suspended at 6 a.m. Eastern time due to electrical activity in the air. There has since been persistent lightning in the area, so play has not yet resumed. Now, the leaders did complete some of their round before the dangerous weather came in, so let's show you the highlights from some of the early play today at Rand Park Golf Club. Charlie, and we'll start with the leader Sharma five shot lead to start the day birdie chance here at two yeah and that's uh, maybe where some nerves would show up early in a round trying to win no nerves in that stroke so Shabanka Sharma extends his lead to six now 21 under but here's a South African with a birdie chance at five yeah if you're gonna have a special week you're gonna have to make your share of putts that length and that one within went in with some authority it was a third straight birdie for Eric Van Ruen moves him to just four shots back but back to our leader at the par four sixth his second look at just how wonderful this golf swing is. <clears throat> 
25 years ago, there, there were more than 10 players on the planet that had a swing that beautiful. Now they're everywhere. It's amazing how many good players we have in this world now. Well, he is looking to become the fifth Indian to win on the European Tour, Charlie, and another birdie opportunity he gave himself. Yep, and right in that range, when you've got one that's a little bit uphill, doesn't have a lot of break in it, if you're going to win, they've got to go in. So he would now be at 22 under. We will head back to the South African who was making the best charge out of the pack so far today. Yeah, good looking stroke right here. I like the acceleration. I like the way that ball's rolling. It's tracking beautifully and uh, that's perfect right there. I mean, that's dead center with perfect speed. Wow, feels good to sink a 30-foot birdie putt. So he's four shots back, but at 6 a.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. local time, the horn blew and play was suspended due to lightning. And Eric Van Ruen actually seeking a victory, as we said, at his home in South Africa. Now, interestingly, this event is actually the second in the Open Qualifying Series for 2018. The first was at last month's Australian Open. So the top three finishers, when this is completed, inside the top ten, who are not already exempt will earn places into the field at Carnoustie next July. And of course, we will keep you posted if and when they do resume play in Stormy Joburg. Yeah, that's a nice early Christmas gift for those players. Now, what else is happening now? The only international team in the field at the QBE, that is Shane Lowry and Graham McDowell, who are very good friends, go way back. Uh, they are in a tie for the lead alongside Steve Stricker and Sean O'Hare. The only international team to ever win this competition was back in 1998. It was Greg Norman and Steve Elkington. We will talk to Greg Norman coming up a little bit later on. And uh, you see that 64. I don't care that it's modified alternate shot. That is really strong play from Lowry and McDowell. And for more on the QBE, she's doing great work all week. We send it now to Chantel McCabe. There's a tie at the top of the leaderboard here at the QBE shootout with Steve Stricker and Sean O'Hare and the other team, one who made the biggest move of the second round, Shane Lowry and Graham McDowell. Eight under an alternate shot. That's no small feat on its own, but then you add all of the wind and the rain. It was a gutsy performance from the Ireland and Northern Ireland natives. Now, these two players, not only did they dress the exact same outfits, which we all got a kick out of, they said their games complemented each other quite well. In my opinion, uh, Graham is one of the best players in the world still, and uh, you know, I feel like I'm, my game is quite good at the minute. So when you're out there, you're hitting good shots, and you're hitting shots, and you know you can rely on your partner to hit good shots after you. And that's that's what this format is all about. It's all about trusting your partner, and and uh, you know, if you hit a bad shot, you you kind of um, bank on him getting you out of trouble. But that's you know, I think there's a lot of trust in a partnership, and we're very friendly, and we have been for years, and I think that helps out there. Thanks, partner. That was very nice. Uh, you know, I think we grew up playing a lot of alternate shot as well. I mean, I think, uh, you know, both both of us growing up in Ireland, we play a lot of international foursomes golf, alternate shot golf. You know, obviously greensomes today, which which is modified alternate. You get two goes at every tee shot. So, you know, you, you it's it's less pressure off the tee. But, you know, obviously, you know, when it's you out there, there's a sense of trying not, trying not to mess it up for your partner. Um, you know, when I'm hitting iron shots, it's pretty easy to know that, you know, this guy's got probably one of the best short games in the world. So I know if I miss a green, you know, this guy might chip it in. And, you know, I felt pretty good with a putter. So I, I, I felt like, you know, we got Shane maybe getting some of the second shots in there so that I could perhaps hold him. And, you know, like like he said, I feel like we have a pretty good synergy together. Uh, we, we both know each other's games very well, and, and we both know we can trust each other when it comes down to it. Now, if Shane Lowry and GMAC pull off a win here at the QBE shootout, they will be the second all international team to win this event. The first being Steve Elkington and tournament host Greg Norman. That was all the way back in 1998. All right, Chantel, strong words there from uh, GMAC about his partner Shane Lowry having one of the best short games in the world. Boy, that's not a confidence builder. I don't know what is, but let's watch and learn right now. Let's talk uh, about another player with an amazing short game, Brant Snedeker, but we're going to focus in on his driving. Yesterday, very, very windy. I'm going to point out three things that he does right here that are just textbook when you're playing on a very windy day. First and foremost, he's got that ball teed down just a little bit. And then the other thing, before we roll this, I want you to watch his hands during the golf swing. His hands are very quiet. In other words, they're not trying to be a power source. They're just holding on to the golf club. And then finally, this is a swing that he makes within himself. Go ahead and roll it. This is his normal sort of quick uh, rhythm. 
but you can see he didn't get outside of himself and that ball launches just a little bit lower, has a little bit less spin, got away from him just a little bit to the right, but in those windy conditions, he was very happy uh, to have that one, especially on what was a very challenging tee shot right there. Okay, so let's look at Sean O'Hare. He's got a situation where he's over the back of the green. He's going to putt, and what he's doing right now, and I love the fact that he's up on the green. He's reading the putt from the time it gets on the green down to the hole. That's got some right to left in it. Now what he's got to do is focus on what he's got to do to get the ball up the slope to the point where the actual green starts. That's got some left to right in it. Sort of helps when you got Steve Stricker to help you read it. So he did everything right in terms of the read. I love the fact that he's got the putter in his hands because if he hits a very poor putt, like what he does here, that's going to be a lot better than if he were pitching that golf ball and he hit a very poor pitch. So when you got something long, a little funky, you got to divide it into sections, and that's exactly what Sean O'Hare did there. Just maybe not great execution, but he got the read right. Okay, Steve Stricker, the magician, for a long time around the greens. A lot of people think that golf has to be complicated, it has to be complex. It does not. Steve is so simple with the way he pitches his ball. It is unbelievable. Focus on his hands. Go ahead and roll this and just look at his hands. They're not doing anything, folks. The, 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 the movement could not be more simple. Just because you're very good at something doesn't mean that it's extremely complex. In this game, especially when you're trying to perform on the stage with a lot at stake and cameras watching you, you got to be able to trust doing very, very simple things. Okay, with Steve Strick, I'm gonna show you another thing that he does that amateurs don't pay enough attention to. Go ahead and roll this. And I want you to watch what he does with his hands. Now, he's a little neurotic about this, but he always has his club face clean, whether it's a putter, whether it's a wedge, driver, anything in between. He has got to have that club face nice and clean. Now go ahead and roll it to the next part, because now that the club face is clean, whatever was on that club face, yeah, it was on his hands. you got to have clean hands as well. So pros know that if you get just a couple of grains of sand on a wedge, a putter, even a driver, it can greatly impact the way that ball flies. I very seldom see amateurs keep that club face clean. And when you guys do it, then you got like some mud and dirt on your hands and then it gets on your grip. So keep your club face clean, keep your hands clean. And Gary, you know I'm a big proponent of putting on sunscreen. But after you put that sunscreen on, you got to get it off your hands. Otherwise, it gets all over your grips, and the ball could go anywhere, Gary. Yeah, you saw me put my sunscreen on I'm at Bay Hill. All right, Design Week, we wrap it up today. It's been wonderful with all the contributions we have gotten across the entire golf industry. And today, we've got a lot for you. Uh, so with that being said, good morning to Matt Janelle. And Matt, first of all, before we start into what we're going to talk about, what is coming up today? Well, Greg Norman's calling in, yep. uh, Design Tiburon. Uh, Representative Jack Nicholas Design is calling in. Representative Arnold Palmer design is calling in. We have more with Jack, uh, Jeff Shackelford and David McClay Kidd. That's all. <laughs> That's it. Okay, now, you know, golfers as architects or designers, yeah. we had a, a brief conversation about this earlier, but Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, we heard from Ernie Els earlier this week, they're dipping their toes in the waters of design. Do they have a common thread? Well, you know, we, we've talked about it all week, and 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 in fairness to the players, you know, this is a, this is a in some cases it's a hobby, it's a side job. These guys, as uh, as David McClay Kid was talking about uh, offline, you know, just because you're an expert golfer doesn't mean you're going to go out and just immediately be an expert architect. These guys, uh, some of the guys that we've been talking to throughout the week, have spent their whole life dedicated to that particular craft. They've worked their way up and they've uh, they've honed their skills. A lot of times, players who've become Architects uh, are more designers, not necessarily builders. They're right. not in the they're not in the equipment. They're not shaping the greens, and that's just a different way of doing it. Um, they, they, they have a hard time relating to amateurs, is what I've found. So the, the elite players, how do you dial back and sort of be, stay sensitive to a 15 or even a 25 handicap uh, with forced carries and green complexes and, and strategy from off the tees? Um, 
they, they depend a lot of times, these players that have become architects, they depend on associates. They depend on the people that they surround themselves with. Are they good at hiring these people? Are they good at managing these people? That's a whole nother part of the business uh, that they've got to evolve into and learn, learn about. Um, and in many cases, when a developer calls a, a big name in architecture, big name in the game, who happens to be an architect, in many cases they're trying to sell real estate and sure. not necessarily trying to use the best piece of land for the golf course. Uh, and, and therein lies the rub. So these guys that are you know, taking this uh, opportunity to create a side business are answering the phone and they're offering they're being offered big chunks of money to build a golf course that may not be necessarily with the first priority to build the best golf course possible. Build a golf course within these corridors because we've got plots of land that we want to build an entire living complex around. So that's where you that that's where you fall into sort of the gray area of if we're going to assess them as architects, we got to know the whole story behind what's actually the the the, the motive here on on building the golf. Well, and one thing that must be said it doesn't mean that they can't be capable and be good no. at this, but it, it just it's a matter of time to find out, LT. T-sheet time. It definitely is, and as you heard from Matt Janelle, a lot of big guests coming up today. We have a busy morning for you, but also on the way on Morning Drive, the fastest way to feel great on the course, it's looking the part. So we're going to bring in Mr. Style himself, Marty Hackle, who's going to join Bailey Mosher to walk you through some do's and don'ts, some fresh trends, and a watch and learn lesson like you've never seen here on Morning Drive with examples from the tour pros, a great way to cap off design week. But you also know that the theme largely includes course design, so we sent Matt Janella and Jeff Shackelford to do some real digging in the name of piecing together the roots that eventually created the Masters stage. So hear the story for yourself on Alistair McKenzie and Bobby Jones and why there are a few holes in that story. Plus, how about hearing from a World Golf Hall of Fame member live? Matt was just referring to this at the QBE shootout. Greg Norman joining us from his Naples, Florida creation, Tiburon Golf Club, to talk about the course, the action on the field, and to take us through his transition from player to course architect. And Cara Banks, rumor has he also wants to talk about Tiger Woods. Yeah, I'm excited to hear what Greg Norman has to say. So we're getting started. We've got a big show and a full house today. And next up, we'll get you ready to hear from a member of the Golden Bears design team. Charlie Reimer is apparently going to be the professor. Take oh, those off. He's trying to look sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> You're ruining He's my still